I love you with my heart, with my soul, with every fiber of my entire being. How are you feeling right now, beautiful soul? So I invite you to come into this space with me today for a short but powerful transmission where I'm going to share some abundance and prosperity activation codes that you'll download through this process to elevate and expand and bring a vortex of energy through your space to propel you forwards on your journey to manifest to bring abundance into your life, into your reality, in all ways, shapes and forms. Remember your amazing, beautiful soul. You came to this planet to play at a level beyond extraordinary. You did not come here to play small. So please close your eyes and come into this space with me. Close your eyes and breathe into your magical body. Breathe deeper and longer and slower. Feel your body. Feel your space, your environment. And realize that your environment, your space is an extension of your body. And your body is an extension of your environment. Breathe deeper and longer and slow. And as you're breathing into your magical body, the home of your soul in this reality, you'll become aware of the most incredible golden sphere vibrating in the center of your chest, the center of your heart and inside that golden sphere is a diamond Merkaba. As you continue to breathe and vibrate, the most incredible light flows from Alpha Centauri through the cosmos, through the fabric down through Mother Earth's atmosphere, down through the skies, through the roof of your space, down through your crown, into your heart, and into the top tetrahedron of that diamond Merkaba. It starts to spin ever so fast in a clockwise direction. Mother Earth opens her heart, and a beautiful platinum light flows from her heart up through the rocks, up through the minerals, up through the surface of the planet, up through your roots, your body, up into the bottom tetrahedron of that diamond Merkaba, which starts to spin anti-clockwise. The two tetrahedrons spin faster and faster. And the golden sphere starts to glow. And as the golden sphere glows, it starts to expand. And as it expands, it starts to spin slowly in a clockwise fashion. It expands out through your chest, out past the boundaries of your physical body, until it's three meters in diameter, rotating around your physicalness, with that diamond Merkaba spinning in your heart. Light codes pouring down from the stars above. Light codes flowing up through that magnetic code, that magnetic frequency from Mother Earth. 
as you vibrate in this space. I'm going to open my heart and connect with you. Brother to brother, brother to sister. Soul to soul, light to light. Consciousness to consciousness. As a multicolored stream of light flows out from my heart through the empty space, it flows into yours. It splits into two. It flows up into your pineal gland, down into your perineum, connecting with those Genesis cells. As that Merkabra in your heart spins faster and faster and turns into a beautiful sphere. As you vibrate in this space. Kiana huri a shakiari amanie le ku uti amana kura seshu ku baka ui amayana kielu fakia shaya waiana yatuelu uki amayana kielu fayatua kuri amayana kuri ashata shiki amayana kuri atiatata shuki akaka hui amashi Kiriana kieru faka ui amayana kiara. Shili amata yata tatigeta kie. Shuku amakie. Breathe these frequencies into your body. Absorb them into your soul. You become aware of an incredible emerald light full of blue sapphire codes flowing in through the walls, down through the ceiling, up through the floor. This incredible emerald frequency with these blue sapphire codes flows towards you, in through the boundaries of the golden sphere, towards your physicalness. This light gets closer and closer and it starts to swirl around the outside of your physical body in a clockwise direction. Faster, getting brighter, spinning and swirling like an emerald and blue sapphire tornado. You start to breathe this frequency in. You breathe it in through your nose, up into your mind. It flows into your left brain, into your right brain. It flows around the outside of your skull, down through your head, your face, your neck, your throat, through your shoulders, your chest and back. It flows through your spinal column, those blue sapphire codes lighting up Jacob's ladder, those 33 vertebrae. One by one, they glow on that blue sapphire frequency. As this emerald light flows through your middle back, lower back into your buttocks, through your heart, lungs, ribcage, down through every vital organ, through your hips, your groin, it swirls through your thighs and your hamstrings. Down through your knees, your calves, past your shins, into your ankles, through your feet, all the way to the tips of your toes. It moves through your shoulders, down your arms, through your elbows, your forearms, your wrists, into your hands, fingers and thumbs. Continue to breathe in this powerful light until the inside of your body is completely full from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, from the tips of your fingers and thumbs to your crown. Once the inside of your body is completely full. In your mind, say thank you and keep breathing. 
as these blue sapphire activation codes start to communicate with every cell, with your DNA. Shuriya makiya mano utala shelo huliya maya tatua. Kusha 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 kiki amaku na kero kaya makiya to. Sasha uya ma uliya maya kiri amatiya. Ki atato huta kare amashiki atato. Ki amatata ta huya tata hi shi ki amatata hukiya hukiya. Shuriya mata shiki atata tata haya taki. Shaka kaka ka. Shui amata ta hi atata ta haya ya hu atata hi atate. Shukumi ana kieru fakia. Saka uma sheru faya sheta to huna. Kama kieto kishi kari amatia. Shuku amayata. Breathe these frequencies into your body. Absorb them into your soul. As your heart expands and expands and expands. If there's something particular that you would like to bring into existence, to manifest, to co-create in your reality right now, I want you to set that intention and place that intention into this golden sphere. Make sure it's gigantic because you came here to play at a level beyond extraordinary. Ki amata da hule tu ma shikiero fakia da doa. Kana ki amashia da hukia da ki. Saku hutana. Plia da huta ki elu masha uli amata da ilia da da ilia da da. Shaka ki amati ena kwa. Shaku ma ya ti amashi. Kari ana no hula kelo plaki amashloaka. Shloaka. Ki di amati ni ana da kuali shili ale ya da Muka masha utia ma eru faka ula. Nasha ma kura. Tia ma sheru faya tuna kiere. Shiki ama tia 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 tia. Shuri ama tia ama tia ama tia. Kishta kolia. Voti ki ya masha uta. Neku nepchu masha ilia siri ama shielo. Kani ama tia. This golden sphere spins faster and faster, communicating with your intention. A stream of light flows from the center of the sphere, down through the empty space, down through the ground, down through the earth's grids, and into Mother Earth's heart. Boom! There's an explosion of light as your intention is communicated through Mother Earth's planetary nervous system. The dragon lines, the grid lines, sent to every ancient hotspot, every grid site, every sacred center around the globe to amplify this intention and charge it. Kuya mashehuri amatiana, kamasa kura, kamashiema, nekuri amatiama shiri amatiama shiki, shukuri amatiama shiana, kire kuta mashakie tu fakia. Kuya mayana yero do watatata kia mashana. Ki shakura shemiyana yana tua. Uka nire mashia mayana. Viyami yami yana wa shuli yama tua. Kutama teru fakia. Nakara miyata to unashri kieli yama tiyana. Shukui yama shana. As you vibrate in this space, that golden sphere starts to shrink slowly but surely. Continuing to spin, it gets smaller and smaller. Moving back towards your chest, compressing all of that code, all of that energy. It shrinks down and down as it moves through the boundaries of your physical body. Until it fits neatly around that diamond merkaba. Energy shooting from the Earth's grids up through your perineum and into that sphere. 
light flowing from Mother Earth's heart up into the Merkaba. From the stars down into the Merkaba. This connection will remain. These prosperity codes are being activated in your system. I recommend you come back and do this meditation every day for 21 days. This is day number one, 20 more to go. The results will be phenomenal. You are amazing. Just be in this space as you start to become aware of your physical body. The vibration in your bones, the tingle in your cells, the frequency in every muscle. We're going to count from five back to zero. When we get to zero, open your eyes, come back into this space and just be. Take your time. There's no hurry. Five. Four. Three. Two, one, zero. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes, come back into this space, and just be. Feel your body, feel your energy, feel the space. You are amazing, beautiful soul. I love you so much. You came here to play at a level beyond extraordinary, to be magnificent, to be phenomenal. And you are. So go and shine that powerful light. Shine it. As bright as you can. Never dampen that sparkle for no one. No man, no woman. No corporation. Nothing. Just keep shining. Speak your truth. Be authentic. Never sacrifice your values. Never compromise. You are the most important human being on this earth plane. You're the most important soul in the universe. In the multiverse. Know this. Feel this in here. Come back and do this for the next 21 days. I look forward to creating magic with you. You deserve it. We deserve it. Wherever you are on this planet, go out and hug your sisters and your brothers so tightly. And remember the golden rule of hugging beautiful soul. Never, ever, ever be the first to let go. Love fiercely and ferociously. And remember to check out our website, starmagichealing.com. We run some of the best trainings on the planet. We have some of the best ascension tools. Come and connect with your tribe. And remember to join our new telegram group, Spiritual Gangster One. And gangster is spelled G-A-N-G-S-T-A, numerical number one. Connect with us daily. Share the truth. The positive vibes. The love. <laughs> I love you, beautiful soul. Go and be awesome. One love, one heart, one human family. Peace out, beautiful soul. <laughs> and anyone who's gone through an experience like I have know that that is huge. It's not a small thing. That's where the sex trafficking is coming from and all the trafficking. That's why it's so easy to hide is because you've got all the boys clubs here doing it. Who you think is doing this charity for children. No, they're not. They're sussing out who's easy to catch. Um, I remember one time my uncle came up behind this little boy I was playing with and we were actually laughing and having a good time and he just took a knife and, and just started cutting off his head right in front of me. Jerry went in and he changed so much. This man has a huge gift and he has an understanding that is very rare. And if you're looking for someone who can help you with the type of negative entity or satanic type of trauma, 
then you found your person. I came from a multi-generational satanic family and um, I was groomed to be one of them. And um, to be groomed means that uh, you go through quite a lot of torturous um, type of situations. Um, say for instance, you are buried uh, alive for 24 to 48 hours in order for what's called trauma-induced um, mind control or mind split to happen. And um, so they can give you a code word and um, you basically become programmable and they use you for their purposes. Um, I was groomed to be what's called monarch and uh, that would be a, um, a prostitute uh, used to go between, um, say for instance, politicians or other people they would deem important um, in order to uh, either send sensitive sen information or to spy. So that was what I was initially groomed for. And of course, I most likely would not remember what I was doing and I would be controlled um, by what's called a handler. So they would have someone who would always be in control of you. Um, when you start out, say for instance, my father would be my handler. Um, and so, and then you would be groomed or they would find you another handler um, and who would probably become your husband or, or something of the sort. Um, I was buried alive for 24 to 48 hours. Um, my father would take me to the Freemason Lodge where a lot of Freemasons are involved in this type of activity. Um, I would be raped repeatedly and I would be used for rituals. And that happened up until I was about five, six years old. Um, my father consi considers me a failure, which I'm very proud to be a failure. And, um, but unfortunately, when you become a failure to them, you also become a target. And if you're not usable, then they will make your life literally a living hell. I spent so many years struggling just to survive in a normal capacity. Um, things that would be normally easy for other people were extremely difficult for me to obtain. Um, there would be certain things that I could do, hold down a job, um, I could go to school, but to actually get ahead, there was always something that would happen. Um, something would derail it or um, I would get sick or, or just there would be uh, I'd be raped <laughs> uh, all kinds of things they they have a way of just finding a way to make things very difficult for you um, I learned not to hope basically dare to hope I learned not to to learn to stay kind of at a numb level uh, because if I got too happy, it sent like a signal out to them uh, to come in and make sure that I was put down again to stop. And, um, but uh, I started learning as much as I possibly could. I moved to Bali and um, I learned a lot of spiritual things there that were very helpful but I seem to never be able to break, through, break free. Um, and with saying that, I think it's also important to say that I grew up in a very strong Christian household. Um, you may find that interesting in the fact that I told you my father was basically a Satanist, but in the Bible it says, be careful for there are wolves in sheep's clothing. Well, that's what Jesus meant. There are so many Satanists that pretend to be very strong Christians and you'll never know but watch out for the Freemasons, that may give you a clue. My father would take me down to the Freemason Lodge um, and there's a reason why the Freemason Lodges don't have windows. It's because they don't want you to see what's going on inside. Um, they have this cover of where they do charities on the outside and they pretend to be this really great community effort kind of people. Um, but what they're really looking for is to prey upon small children because if you notice, a lot of them actually do charities for small children. Um, and, but what they would do is they would take me to the lodge. They would um, do these type of rituals, and, but they would also put on these black 
cloaks like a grim reaper type thing uh, because it would cover their faces and so that way I wouldn't be able to recognize them when I would walk around and they would take turns um, having sex with me and um, or raping me and um, yeah so that happened on several occasions and I saw uh, so many children being murdered um, because what they do is they will drink the blood. Um, I, it's called uh, adrenochrome, so they become addicted to the adrenaline-based uh, blood, and it gives them this really strong high. Um, I'm not sure ex what else it does, but I've also seen other entities, um, not human, uh, present as well, and. Um, that, that was pretty horrible. Um, I remember one time my uncle came up behind this little boy I was playing with and we were actually laughing and having a good time and he just took a knife and, and just started cutting off his head right in front of me. And then he took his head and waved it in front of me like it was a toy. So this is the type of trauma-based mind control that they will use. Um, and yeah, they're not good people. But they also prey on children because they're easy to control. And the one thing that they do use is fear. And if you don't fear them anymore, they lose a lot of power. Um, I'm not saying to be careless. Yes, you need to be careful with these people. But if you're not fearful of them anymore and understand that fear is their tool, then you can understand that you've won most of the battle there. You have 80, 90% of the control. Um, don't be afraid to speak out. The more you speak out um, and speak out and let people know um, because that way it protects you and people need to be helped and you need to know you're not alone. There are so many people out there that this is happening to. People won't, a lot of people say they won't believe me. And I felt that for a long time as well. But thank God for social media and the internet that is now becoming, um, you know, less of a thing for sure. Because if you go online, you'll see there's so many different people. And yes, it's a hard road back, but it's a road and it does lead back to the light. I know I was forced to kill a child one time. They tried to force you to, to do things like that so that you'll get used to it. They try to force you to um, be addicted to adrenalized blood because they'll make you drink blood. And that's one of their hopes to keep you um, addicted or within the uh, family. And, um, but I, it just didn't stick with me. They force you to drink it. I mean, here I am, four years old, and my father is going to spank me or kill a child. They will threaten and say, we're going to kill this child if you don't drink the blood. So these are the things that a small child is having to go through. So, and what they do is they will trick you into killing. Um, say, for instance, um, they will say, oh, we're going to kill your cat if you don't. And they'll blindfold you and they'll put a knife in your hand. You don't even know it's a knife or anything. And they will say, you need to just bang down, bang down, you know? If you don't, we'll kill your cat or something like that. And then you do it and you don't even know that you've just killed someone. So they'll use that with Freemasons as well. It's a trick to keep them at the, within the lodge. So some of your younger ones coming in after they've gone through for a while and they realize that they'll do anything to be a part of the boys club, well, then, then they'll make you stick. Yeah. So that's one of the rituals that they'll use. Not all Freemasons are bad because they know who they can use and who they can't. That's where the sex trafficking is coming from and all the trafficking. That's why it's so easy to hide is because you've got all the boys clubs here doing it. Who you think is doing this charity for children. No, they're not. They're sussing out who's easy to catch. Or they'll have breeders. So they'll catch younger women and then they'll breed them or small children to sacrifice. A breeder is um, usually either a child that they've captured um, who grows up to be, you know, in puberty and she's just too made to have babies over and over again, but she's kept in captivity. Like no one knows who they are, but that way they have enough children to keep sacrificing and, and feeding their addiction. So, and I kept praying to God, I kept praying to God. I was like, what is going on? And it wasn't until after I actually left the church that things started happening 
for me and answers started coming to me. Um, say for instance, I was walking in a, a, a big bookstore in the United States and I said, please, if there's anything out there, I just opened myself up to any other you know, type of entity that could possibly send me positive light, then please do it. And I remember a book just jumped off the shelf and landed at my feet. Neil Donald Walsh, New Revelations. That was the book who brought me out of kind of a religious mind control. I'm not anti-religious. Let me make sure you understand that. I do believe in Jesus still. And I've had uh, conversations with that. But it's been outside of a religious program where there, it's just about love. It's not about so many different other controlling factors. And that broke me out of kind of the religious mind frame. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, my life started from there. And I started feeling a little bit better. I started learning new things. I became much more aware. But there were still these chains that I still felt around me. I still couldn't be this extremely happy. Um, I remember I fell in love with a man who was absolutely beautiful and it was just a few months in and he came back uh, from a trip he had taken and he let me know that he was stage four throat cancer and he died just a few months later. So that is an example of some of the issues that I would have as far as feeling true love or finding happiness. It's always seemed like something got derailed. And I continued to struggle with this and there were certain things that would still get better. But then I met a woman who had gone to a um, talk that was given by Jerry Sargent. And uh, she told me his story and it really resonated with me. And um, she had gotten his contact information. I made a phone call and Jerry was really nice to call me. And it did just took about a minute of me telling my story and he understood, he knew what I was talking about because a lot of people don't, they don't know about all of this stuff, but he did. And um, I remember he helped me a little bit there and, but I was also very skittish, you know, going through this type of thing where they kind of constantly hunt you. It's very hard to trust anyone. So um, I had to leave uh, to go back to the United States. I was in England at the time. We spoke again uh, and uh, shortly after, uh, Jerry did a session on me and I knew right away that things were different and that I finally found someone who knew exactly what was going on. Um, I felt a change. Things definitely started changing. They didn't happen right away, but they did really happen over the next few weeks and I felt like I can started to breathe again and it was safer. Um, I was feeling much more alive. I felt safe enough to feel joy again. And that was, that was when I knew something had definitely changed. And anyone who's gone through an experience like I have know that that is huge. It's not a small thing. And It's a place now where I'm not just surviving, I'm thriving. There is a, just a peaceful contentness now that I feel. It is far more than I have been able to feel in a long time and it's been consistent. And like I said, again, I feel safe. Things are happening in my life that are positive and they're staying positive. It's not a blip for just a little while and then suddenly gone. This changed so much. Jerry went in and he changed so much. There is no doubt of what I have, uh, no doubt that I have this man has a huge gift and he has an understanding that is very rare. And if you're looking for someone who can help you with the type of negative entity or satanic type of trauma, then you found your person. Um, and if anyone needs to speak about it more, I'm happy to. I plan on, um, I plan on fighting back.
and there's too many people out there like me who are afraid to come forward. And I want to make sure that people understand that there is hope and it's okay to hope. And you're not alone. And there's someone who can help. And that's Jerry.